Mr. Deboa, are you optimistic for some concrete commitments from COP28? What are you hoping to come from it? Um, well, I think COP28 will be a moment when uh, all countries are going to come together and say, gosh, um, we, we actually didn't even think that it would be this bad. Um, and so there's going to be a tremendous amount of pressure on, um, on the delegations to do something uh, better. The UN Secretary General is screaming uh, for us to reduce emissions, to try to halve global emissions by 2030. Uh, and as it stands, uh, countries are not on track at all uh, mm. to do that. And so uh, the public pressure on uh, COP28 will be huge. Um, what we what we hope to see, of course, is that countries will uh, uh, raise their ambitions somehow, uh, will double down on, on achieving the commitments that they've already made, um, and will uh, countries like the U.S. and China really uh, may be able to play a huge role in helping the rest of the world decarbonize. The, the volumes of renewable energy that China is currently deploying have totally surpassed everybody's expectations, including China's expectations, right? Targets for 2030 uh, are already expected to be met in 2025, um, and those were only set uh, a few years ago. So um, what does this mean? Uh, so all this capacity of wind uh, and solar that is becoming available uh, is great news for China, but I think it also is great news for the world because um, the whole world is going to need to go through this energy transition in the coming years. So there's a tremendous demand for these renewable energy solutions. Um, and where only a few years ago, uh, renewable energy was the more expensive option, these days that's no longer the case. It's becoming such that uh, wind and solar are actually cheaper than fossil fuels. And that is going to really change the mindset around the world about what it means uh, to, to, to make a quick uh, energy transition.